You know, Oswald, uh, I think it's Chambers, Oswald Chambers, I don't think it was Sanders, said this, uh, these words. He said, we really at this moment know God as real as we choose to. And I think that ought to provoke us. And in a way, I'm thrilled with that tonight. That we know God, we in this room know God as much as we choose to. Because you went out of your way to make it here tonight. And that tells me that I'm surrounded by people and we are surrounded by people of like heart. What do I mean by that? We are like heart in the sense that we do fully believe that God exists. Yeah, we do. And then I'd even take it further than that and say that we believe not only does God exist, but we believe that God is God in the now and that nothing is impossible to him now. And that means that if we believe that God is a God in the now and that he exists, then we believe that he is present here now for anything that we are facing. So when you are in an atmosphere of worship, know something, it doesn't stop there. That simply says, God, we invoke your presence. God, we desire for you to be on the move right now, right where we are. God, we want you to have the last word over the stuff we've been bantering back and forth all week about. We want you to be the one that speaks over our lives right now. Give us healing to break us free. To give us the ability to know Jesus, as my mom used to say, as real as the heart that you can sense in your chest as it beats. As real as the breath that you breathe, that intimacy with God. So if there's anything in the brief moment that I'm up here on stage tonight that I want to say to you, it's this. You can know God in an intimate way. You can know him that way. The Bible says in the book of James, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And so that speaks to us that there is a moment in which if we will initiate those steps towards God, God will in all ways not only meet those steps, but he will run towards us. Even as the prodigal son story tells us that the father ran towards his son when he saw him on the horizon. The Bible speaks of seeking first in the book of Matthew, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. So many other things, so many people claiming your time this past week. But now it's God's turn. I'd like to ask the team to just begin to play. We're going to believe for the Holy Spirit to move right now. Are you ready? What is it that you've come into this room needing from God? Knowing that you can have intimacy with God, do you hunger that? Let's start right there before we think of all the other needs that can be there. Because God will meet you at the place of your hunger. I know people that don't hunger after God and they believe that God doesn't exist. That doesn't shock me. But those that hunger after God with every ounce of their being, I've watched as there have been those that move in the ways of God in such powerful ways that it's, it isn't just a church. Everywhere they go, there's a presence of God all over them because they sought first the kingdom of God. They sought first to please God. Then all the other things fell into alignment. So I'm going to ask you, who is this God that you serve? Not only who is he and getting to know him, but I'm going to ask you, what's on God's heart for you tonight, this next week, coming month until we meet together in this unique atmosphere of worship night again, although we'll be together on Sunday mornings. What is it that's on God's heart for you, for your family, and beyond? Then, not only who is God and what's on his heart, but God can I know your presence in a deeper way than I've ever known your presence before? Oh, I've known you. I've known what it is to sense your presence in a powerful way. We've sensed your presence, God, in this service. But God, we desire to know you. Now make this the prayer of your heart, right where you are. Just stand to your feet. Let's begin to 
tell God that he can move in our hearts and our lives. He can move in our circumstances. We want an intimacy of relationship with him. God, until the hunger for you outstrips the hunger for any material possession we could ever want. Until the hunger for you outstrips the hunger for any relationship we could be in. God, until we know you so awesomely real that we don't doubt your ability to move. We don't doubt your ability to heal. We don't doubt your ability to bring revival. We don't doubt in fact, we don't fear anything that the enemy would try to bring. Instead, we declare, as those who would go forth and worship before the warriors would declare, that yours is the victory, therefore ours is the victory. And those in Old Testament times would declare the victory of God before they ever engaged the enemy. So right where you are, just begin to declare the victory of God over you, over your life, over the one to your left, the one to your right, over this place right now, Capital Life Church. We declare the victory. The enemy is a defeated foe. The enemy is defeated. It's all shadow. He yells and he screams, but he has no power before a living God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. To Jesus goes all the glory. Jesus said is that it is finished. He rose from the dead. The resurrection power that is in the Lord Jesus Christ resides in us. He is interceding right now. His lips are moving. Jesus' lips are moving. Jesus' lips are moving on your behalf right now. 